In the tropical lowlands of northern Colombia, 60 miles from the Caribbean coast, a massive coal mine known as Sarreon dominates the landscape. A giant black hole surrounded by green hills and forests. This is one of the largest open pit mines in the world. It stretches 270 square miles, and it is a barren wasteland. That is the size of 8,000 football fields. It's all been stripped of vegetation, wildlife, all for the sake of mining. In 2003, a team of archaeologists, with the permission of the mine, began surveying within the area and uncovered a large number of fossils, including ribs, parts of a pelvis, a shoulder blade, and a turtle shell. But amongst them was one bone they couldn't identify. It's a massive vertebra, far too large to belong to any known South American animal on record. The bone is over four inches across. And for comparison, the average human vertebrae is only about one to two inches wide. This very large and strange unknown vertebrae is the exact kind of mystery archaeologists hope for. What gargantuan creature could this giant backbone belong to? Up until 13 million years ago, South America was a giant island cut off from the rest of the world. It experienced its own unique plant and animal evolution, leading to the development of many life forms not found anywhere else. Giant beasts, known as megafauna, used to roam the jungles of South America two and a half million years ago. They were all large mammals with big spinal structures. So could these vertebrae be the remains of an enormous mega mammal? Megafauna included capybara the size of buffalo, giant ground sloths, some as big as elephants, glyptodonts, giant, armored armadillos, and all of these animals called these rainforests home. The giant sloth had large vertebrae about the size of the bone that was discovered. In mammals, the neck, thorax, and lower backbones are very different shapes from each other, and they also function separately. The surface of the articular facets are flat, and the neural arch, which forms the visible backbone, as well as the passage for the spinal cord, is very pronounced. However, this bone doesn't look like any of those vertebrae. It clearly is not mammalian. It just doesn't line up. You wouldn't know it by looking at the area now, but tens of millions of years ago, this area was covered in rainforest and swamplands. Think the Mississippi River Delta or the Florida Everglades, except that it's crawling with terrifying prehistoric reptiles and animals. It's basically Jurassic Park. 300 million years ago, peat swamps in Colombia were flooded. Over time, the weight of the floodwaters and sediment compressed the vegetation, forming huge ribbons of coal deposits underneath the ground. This mine has been extracting coal since 1976. The way coal is extracted from the ground, even though it's environmentally damaging and problematic, is also one of the few ways researchers can access deeper layers of the earth that they otherwise wouldn't be able to. So given the climate, the location, the paleo environment that we're seeing in the geologic record at the Serrejón mine, it makes sense. This is where we're gonna find large fossil amphibians. Experts believe that the fossils discovered here were likely animals that got caught in mudslides, and so they eventually became part of the coal-rich deposits. The Serreon pit contains up to 40 coal beds layered between a variety of rock sheets, including shale and siltstone. The unknown fossil was found in a gray claystone layer directly beneath one of the coal seams. Experts found pollen and other spores in that layer, and they used carbon dating to match it to the middle to late Paleocene epoch, which is about 58 to 60 million years ago. The Paleocene is a 10 million year period framed by two major events, beginning with an asteroid impact that killed off more than 75% of living species and ending with a major temperature spike and chemical changes to the oceans. That means that the fossils found in the clays of the Serrejón mine are over 58 million years old. 
Some large turtle bones have been discovered at the mine. So could this vertebrae have belonged to a turtle? In Colombia's Tatacoa Desert, archaeologists discovered the largest turtle shell ever on record. Stupendimus geographicus had an almost 13-foot-long shell and is believed to have weighed one and a quarter tons. This turtle was 90% larger than its closest living relative, the Amazon River turtle, which averages 20 inches in length and is more than twice the size of the marine leatherback, currently the largest turtle on Earth. This ancient turtle would have been closer to the size of a sedan than a pet. So maybe this mass of vertebrae was part of this turtle's neck. Turtles do have vertebrae, but the majority of them are fused to their shells. But if we compare their eight cervical vertebrae to this puzzling bone, even the largest turtle vertebrae would still not be big enough. Turtles aren't the only potential match that was discovered at the mine. Giant prehistoric crocodiles, known as dirosaurids, have also been discovered in the area. Reconstructions estimate that some would have been able to grow up to 20 feet in length. In addition, their vertebrae are more similar in size and scale to this bone. These crocs were massive, nearly the size of a small bus. However, the vertebrae of dirosaurids tend to be more angular. But our mystery vertebrae, it's more solid. And that begs the question, what is it? The team's reptile specialist noticed that this unknown vertebrae has a distinct triangular-shaped neural spine and a thin blade-like anterior process, among other familiar characteristics. These features are unique to one type of reptile and one reptile only. And it's one of the most feared and deadliest animals on Earth, a snake. From the depths of a Colombian open pit mine, Archaeologists make an earth-shattering discovery of a massive vertebrae belonging to a 58-million-year-old snake. So this mystery bone belongs to a massive mega-snake. It's actually similar to the Boid family, which includes anacondas. So it's really a distant relative of many of the current-day Amazonian species. The largest, most massive snake species we have around today is the giant green anaconda of South America. These snakes can reach well over 20 feet long. They can get to over 500 pounds. But as big as they are, our massive mega snake would be five times that size. This massive serpent appears to be the largest ever documented, perhaps the largest one to ever live. A snake has between 110 to 660 vertebrae that vary in size depending on where along its body they are found. Using a mathematical model, experts are able to determine the snake's overall size by estimating where in its body the specific bone would have been located. With this new information, experts were able to piece together a full-scale replica of a snake so large and so frightening that it left no doubt about its place in the jungles of the world. They named it the Titanoboa. By using the length to weight ratios of a rock python and an anaconda as a guide, experts believe that this prehistoric species grew up to 50 feet in length and weighed 2,500 pounds. This mega snake was the weight of a black rhino. Before now, the biggest snake we ever found was the Gigantophis in North Africa. It lived about 20 million years ago, measured 33 feet in length, and weighed 1,000 pounds. That's huge, but the Titanoboa would have eaten that for breakfast. It would have had a similar head construction to other constrictor and void family snakes, like anacondas and boas, only with more teeth. In the case of Titanoboa, you have these curved teeth as well. They latch onto you, and then they wrap their strong bodies around their prey. The lower jaw extends beyond the back of the skull for an extra-wide mouth opening, and it unfuses at the front, meaning it is able to come apart to consume even larger prey. Like most snakes, they weren't that picky with their diet. While their massive size would have made them less agile, 
they were still big and strong enough to overpower many different kinds of creatures, including prehistoric crocodiles, big turtles, or even river fish seven feet in length. If you were in front of them, they were eating you. This enormous serpent would have been thriving as king of the South American jungle. How did it get so big? As cold-blooded creatures, serpents become immobile if their body temperature drops too low. And they must increase their body heat to obtain and digest food, as well as for breathing and circulation. The Titanoboa would have required consistently hot temperatures to reach and maintain its enormous size. In the clay of the Serajan, they have discovered fossils of extremely wide leaves, some many feet across. These leaves indicate that the climate was at one time much wetter, with up to 150 inches of rain per year, compared with the 80 inches currently recorded in the surrounding rainforest, and at least 10 degrees Fahrenheit hotter year-round than temperatures now. For snakes, all of the functions that are essential to life require warmth. As such, Titanoboa was perfectly designed for this intense tropical environment, allowing it to dedicate that extra energy to growing and sustaining a larger body. In the hot and humid jungle, Titanoboa was king. But when the climate shifted and temperatures dropped, the same traits that contributed to its massive size likely led to the Titanoboa's extinction. Only time will tell if Titanoboa is in fact the largest snake or if there's something bigger lying in wait in the jungle.